kind of SAS people, you know, with 100 or more SAS locations, there's only 128 of them in the world out of 4,500 agencies. And, bet- and out of those 128, there are 49,460 locations. So there's like a, full, a small handful of agencies that are like pumping, right? Um, I want to be one of those agencies. So you can see the disproportion there. Some people have nailed it. Some people have nailed it. So all of the 5 to 9s and the 10 to 24s have a lot of work to do. Uh, I've seen these figures before, um, you know, top 100 SaaS agent permanencies, you know, everybody's making about 10 grand a month. Cool. SaaS mode, love this. Client identification in Stripe. It's good. Subscription IDs, make it easy. Um, direct checkout, this is already live. Uh, makes, like this makes running SaaS so much easier. You just copy the link, you send it to whoever you're talking to on the phone or an email. I'm sending you, you know, sign up. That's how you do it. Bang. Creates the account for them. You don't have to have fancy landing pages and funnels. Right? Just send it to them. Go. Sign up. And then that, you know, there's no excuse around SaaS. Um, you don't need to sit there and build three page checkout funnels, two step this and be an e-commerce expert, right? Which, that's the thing that scares people off when, with regard to SaaS. It's like, everybody talking about bump and their checkouts and the cart values and all that stuff. Now it's just like, cool, send the link, sign up, off you go, right? It's good. Uh, rebilling, seeing a little bit of information around the Dunning. Um, Yeah, so if, you know, what the recharge amounts are and all that type of stuff. I believe that's live already. Doesn't make a huge difference to me. Disabling SAS. Uh, I think that's live. But why this is important, you used to be able to convert somebody from normal to SAS and then you're done. You couldn't, you couldn't reverse that. Now you can reverse it. Which is cool. Uh, coupons, great. Fantastic. Love the ability to make a coupon. Delete locations, great. Um, they get scheduled for deletes and they take a while. I mean, this is already live. I don't know what they do. Monthly spend. I haven't seen this. Not, not seen this. The sub account reporting is amazing already monthly spend breakdown I haven't seen it I must be missing something I haven't seen it yet but that's cool usually like usually I go I have to go into Twilio and I have to get all this breakdown and everything um, because then I would manually go and update an invoice in like my accounting system which is zero and this just eliminates that right so it's huge amounts of time being saved upgradable Plans, this is already live, which, you know, by the way, I said the tick box over there. I know that that's live already, which is cool. Um, I think that's really important. Again, being able to have clients be able to upgrade themselves. Um, So then SaaS mode coming soon. Multiple, uh, infinite number of plans. Right, so you can just do whatever you like for as long as you like. Um, there's a whole bunch of settings here around subscriptions, rebilling, reminders. Um, this thing here, though, right, um, around an embedded support widget. So, this thing is really um, important. So, To date, you're reliant on um, the ability of you're reliant on the ability of um, high level 
uh, to uh, use their help and support, right? And what they're doing here is they're saying like, well, the community is running a ton of support. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, um, you can just embed your own support widget. So someone, you know, like you can click on the question mark and it'll be whatever you've got set up, right? And I happen to be uh, to be building um, the knowledge base for that. So this is very interesting to come across right now. So yeah, notification settings, um, unlimited SaaS plans. So you just get everything. Um, great. Multiple brands. So they've did the screenshot here where they've got two brands, right? So two brands. I think they're sort of maxing it out at two. Um, sort of makes sense. Um, otherwise, you know, you know, essentially, you know, if somebody's got three brands, then that stops them going and buying another subscription, paying four ninety seven to high level, right? So makes sense for them to cap it plus you know it's just gonna get too messy right um plan specific rebuilding credits and trial so right so you can so you haven't been able to do this before um you would give a certain amount of credits and you would enable a trial period for each SAS plan across the board now Specifically, you can say, you know, if you're on this plan, there is a trial period, right? And I think it makes sense because you would enable someone to do a longer trial period on the base plan and then upgrade or vice versa. Like someone gets access to everything and then you downgrade them to a lower plan with no trial period. And then they're like, oh, I'm missing out on all this functionality that I used to have before. And then you go upgrade, right? In fact, that's the way you should do it. So clients can downgrade it, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, all this stuff, um, rebuilding without markup, cool. Per contact, that's the way you want to do it. Great, someone's already asked, someone's obviously asked for that. Um, I, I personally wouldn't do it that way. Customized client communications, email and SMS, great. Um, so per seat billing for SaaS plans, I think is gonna be great. Um, you know, part of the value proposition around uh, how you pitch, you know, high level SaaS is that you keep going with this infinite user value proposition, which is extremely lucrative to a lot of people. If people start charging per user per seat, great. Um, but I think, you know, you're going to see that maybe in more in the B2B space than you would in the B2C space. Because, you know, a hairdresser doesn't really have users, they just have the owner of the business, etc. Alrighty, um, lead connector phone system. Um, I have started to explore this. Um, essentially, um, you can make the switch over to lead connector from Twilio. Uh, it allows you to do the migration if you need regulatory approval for the number, you need to be able to submit the regulatory review approvals bundles through the Lead Connector phone system. And I'm seeing a bunch of issues with that right now. So tread carefully with migrating. If you do enable that, you get all sub accounts using it by default as per that screenshot and then toll free number registrations. Now with the uh, long uh, code, um, I think it's what do you call it? That uh, 10 AD, ADLC. Um, with those numbers, Twilio is now saying that um, even pro uh, people that use programmable, well, I think it's called application messages or whatever it's called, anybody that used to be on high volumes used to have to register their brand, etc., with whoever. Otherwise, you were going to get flagged and then, you know, um, they'll stop you from being able to use you know, the deliverability of the impact. They'll stop you being, you know, they'll, as being sort of like whitelisted. So high level are recommending that everybody registers toll free numbers, right? This is US centric. 
um, which a lot of, like I think 99% of anybody watching this video is. So it's relevant to you. It's relevant to you. Plus I do work in the US, so it's relevant to me as well. Regular shoe bundles, I honestly believe they haven't nailed this at all. No idea what they're doing here. Um, I don't think they beta tested this with enough with enough international people. Phone number buying flow. I don't think this is released, but essentially this is just replicating the Twilio buying flow. And you don't have to leave the system. Um, phone number setting for the location. Looks like it's going to be some enhancements. I like that. Um, so you don't need to um, sign into every single account, it looks like. Big connector email. Who knows if this is going to be better than Mailgun. Eventually you think it will be, right? They want to move away from Mailgun, they want to do their own thing, fair enough, right? Um, but what it means is that the deliverability needs to be on point. And it is no easy thing, right? Um, so it'll be very interesting to see how the team goes with making this move. You see things in the community around people switching over and going to spam and all that type of stuff and you're like, Ugh, not going to do it. Uh, migration option, cool, great. Um, custom sending domain, don't think that that's been released, right? Um, so yeah. Don't think that that is currently live. It needs to be live before they see a critical mass of people go over. Email validation, that's good. So that's saying that it's live. Okay, cool. Well, if somebody knows if this is live or not, please let me know. I haven't actually used LC email yet. So, and I'm certainly not seeing this screen in my email services when I'm in the sub account level, so. Is it the agency level that we see this? Don't know. You're gonna need dedicated IPs, for sure. So, anyway. Email validation, that already exists, but now you do it with the LC email, great. Um, enforce unsubscribe links at the API level. Well, you could always do that with mail gun, so. Mm, overall email metrics on agency, this is sick. So, you know, I used to have to go into Mailgun and, or like SendGrid or something and get a snap, a screenshot of the statistics. Um, now it's going to be here, right? It's not released yet, but it's just going to be sitting there, right? And, um, and that's good. So, saves so much time. Happy days. Sending limit. That's good. I like that. Um... You know, this is, this would be good if you can apply it at the snapshot level, um, because then you could, sealing these uh, sending limits for each location based on the plan that they're on. So you could have higher plans for higher sending limits. If you have to manually go in there and change this, it's going to be horrible. So. Hopefully they snapshot that. Dedicated IP, definitely need it for deliverability. Smart sending, what's that? Um, contact list, great. Suppression list, great. Inbox postman, too. yeah. So everything's, everything MailGrid does. Uh, MailGrid, SendGrid does. What am I talking about? MailGun. It's Friday afternoon, I'm losing my mind. Memberships, love it. Uh, well, this is their own memberships. So they've got, you know, gazillions of people taking courses. That's very great. You know, what are we doing? Um, In-app upsells. Love that. One-click upsell. Love that. Love it all. Right. Themes. Got adopted. Community comments. Sweet. This is great. White label app. That's already live. I've used that already. It's sick. Assessments. Sick. Uh, a new theme, who cares? Memberships coming soon. So certifications, offline, I don't know. Assignments, 
announcements, subscription management, and analytics. So bring on subscription management and analytics, and then it's a fully fledged learning management system. Happy days. Can't wait for that stuff. Can't wait for that stuff. Snapshots. Social planner. I already saw it. I'm already using it. It's cool. Um, speed improvements. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, who cares? Mobile app report. Um, don't care. Releases. Here we go. Um, you can do invoices in the app. You can do dark mode. You can do inbound calling. Inbound calling needs to be on the desktop. No one cares if it's on the app because you may as well just dial the phone, right? Yes, it's good. No one cares. It needs to be on the web app. I need to be able to put a headset on, dial something, and if they return the call, it dials and I can pick up. Conversations 2.0, it looks cleaner. Block the calendar out from the mobile app, great. Recurring invoices. Task manager, good. Social sign in. Notifications. White label mobile app, don't care about any of that. All that. Uh, you can do what you want. I know, but they charge you like seven billion dollars for a white label app. Does anybody have a white label app? Let me know in the comments. Complimentary branded dark mode. Wow. My god. Blah, blah, blah. Nobody has the white label app because it costs a fortune. WordPress. Uh, I'm already starting to see things with WordPress around hosting $16 US a month. Too much. It's too much. Domain management. Fair enough. I mean, if you're big in the agency space and you're doing work, lots, lots of um, websites on WordPress, cool, it probably makes sense. Uh, I don't personally, so it doesn't make sense for me. One click migration. I don't know if that's released or not. Pre configured email mail beam. Mail beam by lead connector. What is that? Plugin management. Right, you can manage the plugins. Yep, get it. Okay, so you can do themes and plugins and all that sort of stuff directly from high level, which is cool. Um, and you can do all sorts of stuff with more with WordPress. Reputation management. What have we got? Autoresponder for GMB and Facebook reviews. Love that. Done for your review websites, funnels. Cool. And another widget template. So the autoresponder, that's good. Means you don't have to have a snapshot with a whole bunch of stuff pre-made. Now they're just going to have an autoresponder setting. Happy, happy days. That's going to piss a lot of people off because they spend a lot of time building autoresponders. Now it's just done. Next. It does stuff. You can resell it, white label it, and it does a scan thing. Uh, this is not too relevant for me. I'm not in the US. We don't have Yext, so, and we're not allowed to use it. What's up? This is, they, they started working with Twilio, and then Twilio must have just annoyed the shit out of them. And then now they're um, working directly with Meta. By late Q4, early Q1, hurry up. And I'm assuming there's a whole, this is a big project, but they just need to hurry up and get this done. Um, they've been talking about it since, you know, the beginning of January this year. So it's all coming soon. Uh, HIPAA, all the legal and legislative stuff that you need to do. Archiving, BAA, file and view download capabilities, great. 
Um, yeah, blogs, what have they done? So that's already there. New blog posts, then you can include the widget in funnels and things like that. What are they gonna do? Categories, RSS, social planner, blog widget, social share comes in mini, yeah. Meh. Don't care. Social planner statistics. People are using it. 180,000 posts since they published it out. Man, that's insane. Jesus! CSV import. I saw this the other day. I'm using it myself. Uh, very useful. If you're a social media marketing agency and you're not going to use that, I mean, what the hell's wrong with you? But that's cool. Um, you can just like load up a ton of posts, include them in a snapshot. Value, value, value for customers. What are they going to do? TikTok, Instagram, and Reels. Uh, or this, the, the hashtags. And custom variables is going to be cool. An approval flow like that. What are they doing on email marketing? So email templates and campaigns. I've already seen this where they do one click migrations away from like active campaign and MailChimp. So that's sick. Um, and a whole bunch of stuff around mobile formatting and statistics. A-B testing. So essentially think about it like this. You will not need MailChimp anymore. You will not need Active Campaign anymore because they're going to build out all the functionality. It's going to be robust as hell. And you can one click migrate away from both of those platforms. See you later, all those tools. Templates, uh, yeah, they're already there. Some of them are terrible, some of them are okay. Funnels, websites, social planner, and emails, yeah. Some of the social stuff is interesting though. Right, it's kind of like Canva, except a really cut down version of it. Payments and invoice is interesting. Um, we don't, we know people use it, right? Um, whoa, that's a crazy amount of transactions processed on the platform. Text to pay links is accounted for 26% of all transactions through high level. What the hell? Man. No one's using calendar payments. Anyway, coupons, happy days. Uh, Apple Pay, Google, etc., etc. Subscription management and the client portal. That would be amazing. Um... Now, proposals, contracts, and e-signing. So, love this. You know, the ability to do a proposal, someone signs it, convert it to an invoice. Someone to do a uh, estimate as well, which is like a draft invoice to say, here you go, turn that into something, and then have that with inventory and stuff, right? Um, it's gonna be game-changing for the service-based businesses who the agency of the world are servicing to be able to do that, right? So. Reliance on third party is still there for inventory items that go from, you know, like raw materials and labor don't really work with, with high level right now. So this is, um, this is really cool. Affiliate manager, you can do affiliate programs. Um, I don't refer to it as affiliate programs, right? Like this is just a voice of customer uh, piece of tech, um, drives advocacy. So you can tell people to go and sign people up and they'll get affiliate revenue for it. I'll be interested to see what sort of adoption average Joe business owner uh, actually cares about this type of stuff. Um, yeah, stuff, reporting, features release. Um, we already saw this with the sub account reporting so you can see um, rolled up statistics across all the locations over the functionality and then detailed graphs on users, contacts, appointments and outreach. Love that, love all of that. They've done an amazing job there. Uh, happy days. Um, attribution reporting at the agency level, reporting across locations, creating your own dashboard. So this is three to six months out creating your own dashboard, creating a leaderboard, like, yeah, yeah, loving this. 
people are going to be frothing over the ability to do this sort of stuff. Again, no more third-party reporting tools. Just do everything natively, right? Location reporting, revamping attribution, great. Core reporting, great. I spoke to Sean about those two areas of the system and I was like, they haven't been touched forever. So they're revamping those, which is great. Google Analytics 4. I'm not even moved on to that yet, but that's interesting. Eliza, single sign-on. Uh, manual actions, text to pay through her, that's cool. Rich text to allow multiple bookings in the same slot, cool. If you're a big Eliza user, then that's good for you. Funnels, websites, forms, and surveys. They've improved the speed. What have we got in Q4? Videos, image sliders. Enable and disable firms and servers based on a date. Cool, so you can expire something. Instagram element. No idea what that is, sounds cool. Going live after Q4, brand kit. Oh, that's cool. Conditional logic and form and surveys. Nice. Math operations. That's good. As you can probably tell, we're, we're reaching the, some of the slides I haven't even looked at yet. So you're seeing it, me reading these slides for the first time because I got booted out of when Sean presented these live at Level Up. Um, guide me. Yeah, webinar series. Yeah. Right, and we're coming to the end here, but so made to order website and funnels. Services wise, um, I've never ordered anything from high level. I don't know about you guys. Never have. But apparently they do basic advance and deluxe on all of these things. And then they do advertising bundles. They've got plug and play advertising bundles to help marketing experts, agency owners streamline launches for clients. And they do niche rush packs. Focused on one industry, one offer, and blah, blah, blah. 60 of them, they ready, they reckon. With more platforms to come in 2023. Uh, more are being created each week. I How do I buy this? I want to do it. Someone bought an advertising bundle from high level yet? Tell me how to do it. Facebook or Google, off you go. Radio, this has been another presentation from Growth Ball. That was almost an hour. If you stuck in right to the end, you're amazing. Uh, think of a number between 1 and 100. Whoever gets the number, and I'm going to write it down right now. Whoever gets the number, I'm going to announce it in the, out in the next two weeks. You're going to have a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, as I always love to do, meeting people from the high-level community. If you haven't seen my website, growthable.io, go there now. I have about... 160 unique how-to articles on how to use high level if you don't use high level currently today sign up on my link below and get access to coaching education and training 100 free if you're on my affiliate program i will see you guys in the next video thanks for being with me cheers have a great weekend